This week's Torah portion is Lech Lecha. And in it, we read about Abraham, we read about Sarah. And uh, one of the reasons given as to why we need to read these stories is because Abraham and Sarah, as the first of our foremothers and our forefathers, are people who, by who they are in the world and what they do, they lay down spiritual DNA that is put into all of us. It comes, it's in, we inherit the spiritual DNA. And so we look to Abraham and Sarah and our other foremothers and forefathers to understand what capacities we have. We look to them and say, oh, you laid this down into who I am today. So I can draw on that same spiritual DNA that you, Abraham and Sarah, put down at the beginning. And it says that everything goes after the beginning. So here we're reading the foundation of who we are as a Jewish people. So Abraham is told to get up and to leave, leave his father's house, leave his land, and to go to a place that's unknown. Go to a place that God will one day show him. He doesn't show him right now where he's going. He doesn't know where he's going. He's going into the dark, so to speak. He's going from familiar to unfamiliar. And God says, I'll be with you, but I'm not going to tell you where you're going. And isn't that our journey? We go, we do things, we embark on things. We don't know how it's going to end. We don't know what the result will be. And it feels like it's dark. It's a little bit like, um, if you understand, that's how Jewish time is. Jewish time starts with the night time and, and, and goes into the morning. So the day, the Jewish day starts at night. <laughs> so we go from darkness to light, hopefully. We get some clarity as we move through time. So Abraham is told to leave. He gets up and he leaves. And it's considered to be one of 10 tests that Abraham has to go through. There challenges and struggles that he has to go through to access the potential that he has to become the forefather that's laying down this spiritual DNA for us all that we all inherit. So this is the, the first test. It's given as the first test that he has to leave familiar and go to unfamiliar. And Rabbi Jonathan Sachs speaks about this in four different ways. So he suggests that the first one is that he's going for himself, that through this journey, through going to a place that's uncomfortable, that you don't know what's going to happen, through being challenged by this, you will grow, you'll become different, you'll access parts of yourself you didn't know were there before, you'll come to believe in yourself, you'll create yourself, you'll grow, and so, and so you're going for yourself because through this challenge, through this test, you will grow. So there's that going for yourself. Secondly, Rabbi Sachs says, you will go with yourself. So all that you've learned and all that you are at this point, you take with you as you travel. It's likened unto a perfume bottle. There's a perfume bottle in a room and you take off the lid and the smell pervades the whole room and everybody in the room can smell it. And so too, when as Abraham journeys out, he takes with him all the souls that he, cre that he and Sarah created. What does that mean? It means that the perfume that he admitted by recognizing God, by understanding the truth, by understanding the oneness of the, of the creation, that there's the, a God that's good and giving and loving, by recognizing that and, and living with that reality, that the, it's like the perfume that spreads and people smell it and they want, they want more of it and they followed him. So he created, they created, Abraham and Sarah created souls. They created people that wanted to come with them. And so too, as they go on their journey, they bring themselves with them. So they're going for themselves and they're going with themselves and they're going to themselves. What Rabbi Sachs indicates is going inside, recognize that you are a soul within a body. And as much as we're going on a journey, our soul that comes from the spiritual realms and is taken from its home up in the heavens and is put into a body and travels through this life and then goes back up into the heavenly realms, that the soul is on a journey. So go to yourself, go inside and recognize that's who you are. God says to Abraham, look up at the stars. See the stars? Your descendants will be like the stars. They'll be as numerous as the stars. They'll be like the stars. What are stars? Stars are bright, shining light that is emitted into a darkness. Each one is separate, each one is unique, each one is individual, um, each one has a name. So the stars are what the descendants of Abraham are likened unto. We are like stars. We're individual, we're unique, we have our own light to shine, hopefully to dispel the darkness that's all around us, so that we have that potential to emit light like the stars. God also says to Abraham that your descendants will be like the sand on the seashore, will be like the dust of the earth. 
So as much as we're individual, unique, bright, shining lights in the darkness, we're also a particle of sand in the vastness of the seashore, so to speak, that we are part of something much bigger than ourselves, that we're a little speck, speck of dust, so to speak, or a little speck, particle of sand in something much bigger, but we're part of it and we're integral. I mean, it's important that we're there, but we're part of something much bigger than them, so ourselves. So on the one hand, we're sand, and on the other hand, we're stars. So that's who we are, and we're this soul. So on the one hand, says Rabbi Sachs, the journey is for ourselves to grow. It's for ourselves to take ourselves with us and go out and share what we know and spread light and spread perfume. And we're going to ourselves. We're recognizing that we're a soul. We're recognizing like we're like the sand, part of something much bigger. And we're, part, and we're like stars. And finally, go by ourselves. So Abraham was described as Ha'ivri, somebody who is stands apart, somebody who is separate, somebody who is a trailblazer, somebody who is counter culture. Abraham and Sarah stood with their truth. Even if the culture wasn't in line with them, they stood apart, they stood separate, they stood strong, they understood what their mission was and why they were in the world. And so too, there's this aspect of ourselves standing with our beliefs and not being, not being um, um, influenced by the outside culture that we can hold on to who we are. So something else that happens in this change of location, um, as well as the change of location, is that Abraham and Sarah have a name change. God changes their names. He added an, an extra letter to each of their names. The name, one of the letters of the name of God is injected into their names and they become Abraham and Sarah. And the idea that I want to, um, uh, I want to share is that as we change, then our destiny changes. As we move through life and hopefully we grow and hopefully we become better, we become kinder, we become, we become, we become more um, um, in line with the truth of the world. As, as we do that, then, then the destiny of the world will change. So that's the idea behind prayer, that we enter into prayer as one, one being, one way of being in the world. And through our prayer, we change ourselves. So we might be a little bit different on the other side of the prayer experience that we've had. And it doesn't have to be a big change. It could be a little change, or understand something a little bit more or be connected to something a little bit more. And in that change comes a change in the destiny. So in this week's Torah portion, we learn about the name change of Abraham and Sarah, and we learn about their place change. And we also, we also learn that that we can do that in this in, in our lives. There are people who change their location in order to change their mazel, or they change their name. People who are sick are often given another name like Raphael, so they should be healed. Or somebody who may be close to dying is given the name Chaim, that they should live. That we change the name, we change the destiny. And it's interesting that it says you change your mazel, you change your mazolos. So the idea of that is that the stars represent a certain divine energy that's, that God filters through into the world through the stars, that, that, that there's energy that comes through the stars. So you can look at the stars and you can know what kind of divine energy. So when you say mazel tov to someone, you're not really saying congratulations. What you're saying to them is that your mazolas, that your, your star constellation, the energy that's coming from God through the stars to you is good. Mazal tov, you have a good mazal, you have, you have a good energy that's coming through the stars. God says to Abraham, you and your descendants will be above the mazolas, above the stars. You're going to be in my domain. And God and, and we, who are the Jewish people, are a miracle that we're still here, that we're still survived. And God says, I'm going to protect you and I'm going to make you a great nation and I'm going to give you the land. There's a promise of the land and there's a covenant made between Abraham and his descendants and God. And so these are some of the things that we learn in this week's Torah portion. We learn about the journey and the journey is a challenge sometimes. Sometimes it feels like we're in the dark and we don't know where we're going. And one day, please God, God will open our eyes and we'll understand with clarity why we're on this journey or why it had to be so dark or why it had to be the way it is, but it is the way it is. So in the journey, in the journey, there are things to learn. We can grow ourselves for ourselves. We can go with ourselves to spread that perfume. We can understand that we're stars and, and that we're sand and that we're a soul in a body. And we can understand sometimes we have to stand apart and be strong and be counterculture and stand true to the truth that we know. 
So that, that and, and at the end of the day, God is the Magain Avraham, the shield of Abraham. God will protect us and God will look after us. So please, God, we should be protected. We should not have too much darkness in our lives. We should be able to spread a lot of light and do a lot of good and be the blessing that God wants us to be.